Hi YouTube, this is Yannick from Tutorial.cu and welcome to this video. You will learn how you can create an entire RESTful API in ASP.NET 6 in only 9 steps and in under 12 minutes of video length. If you are new to our channel or haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to stay tuned and don't miss any nice programming content. If you're looking for the source code of this project, make sure to check out the link to the GitHub repository in the description below. Let's get started with part 1, setting up our project. Open Visual Studio, create a new project and search for ASP.NET Core Web API. Make sure to select the correct template here. Now let's click on create. Let's give it a good project name like Hotel Booking API, hit next again. In this video we take .NET 6.0 and make sure to enable the open API support so that we can have an API documentation. Part 2. Removing default scripts. In our new project make sure to select the weather forecast script and delete it. Also open the controllers folder, select the weather forecast controller and delete that one too. So we don't need those scripts, let's put them right into the trash. Part 3. Creating our hotel booking model. Now let's create our hotel booking model so that we can save the client and the room number and all of this stuff. So create a new folder, call it models and add a new c -sharp class and call it hotel booking. We will use this hotel booking model to store information inside of a database so that we know which customer is currently checked in in a specific hotel room. So let's open a model and add three new properties. One for the ID, it's the primary key for the database later on. One for the room number, this is also an integer. And one for the client's name. Part 4. Setting up an in-memory database. And if you are new to our channel or haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so that you no longer miss any nice programming related content. In order to make use of a database, we need to create a database context. A database context is a simple class which contains dbset properties of the type which we want to store in our database. Afterwards we can make use of the db context to create, modify and read data from our database. Now right click on the data folder and add a new c -sharp class. Call it API context, this is the database context and let's first of all import some namespaces, entity framework core and our hotel booking API models folder with all of the classes inside it. Now take the API context and inherit it from the db context. For this we also need to create a constructor and as a parameter we take the options. Now don't forget to also use the base constructor from inheritance. Now go ahead and create a public db set of type hotel booking. Now call it bookings and in the next part we will use the db set of type hotel bookings to store our hotel bookings inside of an in-memory database. Let's add a new NuGet package to our current solution. Open the NuGet package manager and search for entity framework core dot in memory. Select the correct package, check our project and click on install and accept the agreements. Now that we have our NuGet in memory package installed, let's go ahead and register our in memory database inside of the program.cs. So go ahead and add two namespaces, the entity framework core namespace and the hotel booking API data namespace where our API context is located. Move on, call the builder, services and add a new DB context of type API context. Now make sure to configure the options and call use in memory database. Now finally configure the name for your desired database, for example booking db and as soon as we launch our application, a new in memory database with the name booking db and of type API context will get created. Part 5. Creating an API controller. And before we do that, I just want to tell you that we have created a complete ASP.NET Core 6 course 
in which you will learn everything you need to know by developing real-world applications. So definitely make sure to take a look at this course. You can find the link in the description below. Right click on a controller folder, add a new controller. Now make definitely sure that you select API, not MVC, right? So click on API and select empty API controller and click on add. Now let's give it a good name like hotel booking controller. And first of all, we import some new namespaces, hotel booking API dot models so that we can make use of our hotel booking and hotel booking API dot data so that we can use our context. Let's create a private read only API context. This will be our database context provided from the dependency injection as soon as we take it from inside of the constructor, which we have right here. So take over the API context context, which will be delivered from the dependency injection and assign it to our private read only context. Part six, setting up an endpoint for creating and editing hotel bookings. Inside of our hotel booking controller, we will now add a new method for creating and editing new hotel bookings. So create a new method and definitely make sure to add the HTTP post attribute. The return type of this method should be JSON result because then we can simply return objects in JSON format. So let's go ahead and take in the parameter a booking which will get sent to this endpoint. Let's check if the ID of the booking that we are receiving from the parameter is equals to null. And if it is null, then we will have a new booking. So let's just add it to our bookings table. If the ID is not null, then we might have it, this booking already existing in our table. So let's go ahead and try to search for this booking in DB. And if the booking is not existing, so the ID is not existing in our database or the entire booking, then we simply return a JSON result with the content of not found. So we tell the user, hey, we don't have that booking. And in the other case, we have the booking. So let's just replace the current booking in the database with the new one that gets sent in from the parameter. Finally, very important, always save your database context after modifying elements or adding elements. So let's call context save changes and return the OK result, including the booking in JSON format. Now let's start our application. We will now see the Swagger API documentation that got created automatically. Let's go to our new post endpoint slash hotel booking. Let's enter some fake data here and press on execute afterwards. We will now see in the response that everything has worked successfully and that we now have added a new hotel booking to our database. Let's add some other data. Let's add an ID which is not existing. As you can see, we have 404, which is the not found status code. Finally, let's make the last test and let's try to modify an existing hotel booking. So enter ID one and a new room number, press on execute. And we now have modified our first element that we have just added. Part seven, creating an endpoint for getting a specific hotel booking. Inside the hotel booking controller, we will now add another endpoint, this time of type get. So make sure to use the correct attribute, which is HTTP get. Again, we will make that public and set it to the return type of JSON result. Call it simply get. And as a parameter, take the integer ID. Let's try to use that ID from the parameter to find a booking inside of our database using find method. So this result or this booking could potentially be null if we don't have a booking in our database that is using this ID. So let's go ahead and check if it's null. And if it is null, we simply return a not found status code. If we have a valid booking in our database, we simply return that. So let's call return new JSON result and let's pass this booking in a JSON format. Part eight creating an endpoint for deleting a hotel booking. In a hotel booking controller, add a new method. This time it's for deleting. So take the HTTP delete attribute. Again, make the method public type of JSON result when it comes to returning, call it delete. And also this method takes an integer for sure for the ID. So let's again try to check if we have 
a booking with this ID in our database. And if we don't have one, again, we return a simple JSON result saying that we don't have content. So let's call not found. If we have a valid result, let's go ahead and delete that, call context bookings remove and pass in the result, which is the existing booking. Now, again, after modifying the context, make sure to call save changes and return a new JSON result saying that we no longer have content right here. Now let's start our application again and add some new data. So here we have our post endpoint and I just add some data. Now let's test our get endpoint, enter the ID, which is one. And as you can see, we now have a response, which is providing us the data for ID one. Let's go ahead and try to delete that one. So test another endpoint, enter the same ID again. And now you can see status code 204, which is for no content. Now let's try to get again. And as you can see for the same ID, we no longer have content. So getting and deleting is also working. Part nine, getting all bookings from the database. Inside of our hotel booking controller, we again add a new method, this time type of HTTP get again with a custom route on slash get all because this endpoint will return all bookings. And we now go into the context in the bookings table and take all of the elements that we have and bring them into a list and simply return that list as a JSON result. So when we start the application, we can see that we have different endpoints. But our get all endpoint is not named like this. So let's escape this. Let's remove the custom route, scroll to the very top and go ahead and add to the controller another slash slash action. And when we start the application again, you will now see that the route is now completed with all of the actions, create, edit, get, get all, etc. Now I added some fake data. And when I called the slash get all endpoint, all of our data got provided. So we now have a complete functional RESTful API. Please leave a comment and tell us if you like this new sort of video. Go ahead and subscribe right now to our channel so that you don't miss any content and make sure to check out our complete ASP.NET course. You can find the link in the description below. However, if you want to continue now watching some more ASP.NET content, make sure to check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.